Hello and welcome to EVs and Beyond. I'm Rich Edwards and I am in sunny Palmerston North to look at something a little bit different today. It is an electric vehicle, but not like one we've ever really seen before. This is the Toyota C-Pod. It's a very small electric car that Toyota New Zealand are really keen to try and bring to New Zealand. Why? Because I guess the theory is, is that the typical electric vehicle doesn't necessarily fit every need out there and there is plenty of work that can be done by smaller cars that use less resources, less space and are more fit for purpose. Now, while it meets most of the needs of a, or requirements of a normal car, it's what is globally kind of classified as a quadricycle. Now, quadricycles aren't yet allowed on the road in New Zealand, but they're working closely with government to trial these around Palmerston North initially to see whether there is something that could legally be used in New Zealand. And they're pretty confident about it. They've put in some forward planning, a few orders for quite a number of these, to try out and see whether they might want to put them on the market. So let's have a really quick look around them. Now, if we pop open this cute little port here, you've got a charging port. It is Type 1 at the moment. This is a JDM car. Uh, they're not necessarily going to be able to convert that, but this is something they are looking at. Uh, yeah, so if we walk around the car, it is very small. This is uh, just under two and a half metres long. So if uh, you've been following, we recently drove the Mitsubishi EKX. This is the same length as just the wheelbase on the EKX. So it is that small. It's a lot smaller than a K car. If we walk around the side, you have tiny little wheels here with uh, energy saving Ecopia tyres on them. Uh, and you have just the one door, no winding window, just a sliding window there. Disc brakes in the front, uh, drum brakes in the rear. And it's kind of this interesting kind of material. It is a lot of plastic. Uh, this is painted. This is just kind of black plastic. I think it looks kind of cute and kind of cool. Uh, so yeah, let's come around the back. Now, it does have a boot. You really see at the rear how small this car is. If you guys some context, I'm six foot and wide, and I make it look even smaller than it is. But uh, if we pop the boot here, there is actually reasonable storage there. I reckon you could stack in maybe two kind of carry-on bags there or a few shopping bags if you need to. One big piece there. Now, this sticker here indicates something we'll get to later when we drive it. It has a speed limit of 60 kilometres an hour. But in the city, do you often really drive much faster than that? You are not going to take this on the motorway. It will be banned from the motorway. But around town, 50 kilometre limits. Who really needs it uh, anyway? Right, so getting inside the seapod. And the first surprise is that I fit. Uh, I, as I said, many times you're watching the videos, I am a bigger person and I have gotten in here quite easily. And it's interesting, the steering wheel actually reach adjusts as well. So for those with uh, yeah, different body shapes, you watch you make it in here. Now, the, it is only a two-seater, obviously. Uh, you are very snugly with your co with your uh, passenger, so hopefully you like them. Um, now, it's a really surprisingly high-quality interior for what is a tiny kind of interesting car. Um, you've got airbags here. Uh, you've got uh, controls here for ventilation, so we have uh, a AC unit. You don't have a heater. What you do have, though, is heated seats, so I think that's a pretty good combination for the New Zealand climate as such. Uh, and up here you've got a basic gauge cluster, you've got USB ports for power and a 12 volt port. Uh, yeah, basically you need no glove box, but a little bit of storage here. And cup holders down here, you've got to have your cup holders, particularly for a little city car. Uh, electric mirrors, which is, yeah, I guess you can't really reach them from here. Now, no keyless entry, just a normal key, but that's fine. Now the transmission here, and I've hopefully the GoPro sees this, you've got a neutral, a drive, and a reverse, no park, but I guess you just turn the car off. Uh, and um, ah, another one I've spotted here, you have a heated windscreen, that's pretty cool. Uh, parking sensors, even though you can pretty much see the back of the car right there. Um, and it has uh, safety features as well, as I mentioned before, you've got airbags, you've also got uh, autonomous emergency braking there. Um, not only else, it, uh, it doesn't have a crash test rating, it's unlikely to, uh, but uh, yeah, I 
kind of trust that Twitter will have actually ended the air this in a way that at low speeds in the city, you are going to be relatively safe. So yeah, so that's the inside of it. Uh, I think surprising how much space and how practical it feels inside. It's not too stupidly small. So uh, yeah, let's go give it a bit of a drive around a very wet car park. So, what are we talking around here for tech spec? So, as we said, maximum speed of 60 uh, kilometers an hour. Let's see about fits. Uh, nine kilowatt hour battery and a WLTP range of 150 kilometers. Now, how can you do that off a nine kilowatt battery? Well, part of that is because, as we said, it'll only go 60 kilometers an hour. So you're never going fast enough to really burn a huge amount of fuel. In fact, I think I can hear the fan now for the battery. So we push the drive button and we are underway. Bit of a whir. We're out in the real world. So what is this like to drive? Well, it's interesting. It's not powerful. The pedestrian warning noise is very loud. I think that's because it's quite a small car. You can kind of hear a lot of stuff. But it gets along well enough. There you go, we're up to 30 already. We go a bit faster. So we can peak it out to, that's 40. That's 50. No, that's 50. And then on the brakes. The brakes are pretty good. So yeah, it's it's leisurely. It is very much a city car. Yeah. It's not plated for the road yet, so we are cruising around to a New Zealand's uh, compound. The steering is quite slow. I don't believe it's power assisted, but it works well enough. It does feel a little bit squidgy on the road, but it doesn't feel unsafe. It feels better than a golf cart, but it doesn't feel like a normal car. Um, how good is the turning signal? Though? Let's have a look. Right. So if I go and put the car in a lock and turn around now. Wow. That's pretty good. That is impressive. If you've ever struggled turning around in a more car park this is the car for you that is a party trick let's try something else let's see I'm gonna reverse up here so what I'm gonna try to do here is I'm gonna put my phone on the dashboard with a timer hopefully you can see it in the go camera otherwise uh, we will uh, do that, and we're going to try see how long it takes to get to 50 kilometers an hour. So if I go stopwatch, right, I'm not worried about it falling over because we're not exactly going to be going very fast. So three, two, one, start. Oh, I can feel the acceleration. Oh, 40 kilometers. 45, 46, we're running out of road, 50. So 11 and a half seconds. 11 and a half seconds for 50 kilometers an hour. That's fine, that's, that's okay. So the Toyota C-Pod. This is really cool. And well, look, it's not gonna fit everyone. There's plenty of people who are probably gonna find this just a little bit too small. I think for a lot of people and a lot of companies, particularly with pool fleets around town, this is gonna be really neat. But the best thing, is the price. Toyota New Zealand suggesting this will be somewhere between 20 to 25,000. And while that seems like a lot compared to say a used in Port Leaf, this thing will be new, it'll come with a warranty and all those kind of things and the support that a company like Toyota gives. And if they were to fi perhaps get a subsidy on that, that could be a car that is really cheap and really cheap new electrified motoring. Is it perfect? No. Is it exciting? Absolutely. And I've already said to them, it might be really good for places like Waiheke Island or uh, particularly in those inner cities. So thanks so much for watching today. Don't forget, we've got plenty more videos on here. I highly recommend you go and check out our video of the Mitsubishi EKX. Very similar concept, a bit bigger, a bit faster, but similar kind of 
does EV need to be big kind of setup? Uh, like, subscribe, all those things, and we'll catch you soon on EVs and Beyond.